U.S. Navy has just unveiled the ultimate weapon. This technology is a laser-equipped aircraft carrier that is capable of neutralizing hypersonic missiles from adversaries like China and Iran in a matter of seconds. This breakthrough technology could shift the balance in the growing rivalry between these world powers. But what exactly makes this carrier so powerful? And can it truly counter any threat posed by its enemies? Join us as we explore the mind-blowing features of the United States laser aircraft carrier that can defeat all China and Iran hypersonic missiles. The relationship between the U.S. and China has been a mixture of cooperation and competing against each other, influenced by a long history. Since the founding of the People's Republic of China in 1949, the two countries have gone through both tense and cooperative times. They officially established relations in the 1970s, but old issues like Taiwan's status, disputes over territory in the South China Sea, and human rights concerns still create problems. Despite these difficulties, their economies are closely connected, making them the two largest in the world by GDP. Their relationship is complicated, reflecting a global struggle for power as both nations try to be the dominant force while also managing their shared economic interests. However, there has been a surge in hostility these recent years. In August 2020, the Chinese People's Liberation Army Rocket Force fired a number of ballistic missiles into the northern end of the South China Sea from locations in mainland China, simulating an apparent anti-ship strike. This was only one of many exercises considered a warning message to the U.S. The U.S. likely had a good view of China's missile launches because a U.S. spy plane, the RC-135 Cobra Ball, was in the Red Sea during the launches. China reportedly tested the DF-21D and the larger DF-26B ballistic missiles. The DF-21D is an advanced anti-ship missile designed to hit aircraft carrier strike groups from over 1,450 kilometers away. The U.S. National Air and Space Intelligence Center first reported on it, noting its significant impact on naval warfare. By 2009, the missile's capabilities were further improved with the launch of specialized satellites that provided accurate guidance. Just a year later, the U.S. Department of Defense confirmed that China had developed an operational version of this missile, which could reach moving targets like U.S. aircraft carriers. This weapon is believed to employ maneuverable re-entry vehicles equipped with terminal guidance systems, giving it an edge in targeting. The U.S. Navy, recognizing the threat, adjusted its defensive strategies, focusing on deep water ballistic missile defense. However, the challenge remains daunting. Intercepting a high-speed maneuvering missile like the DF-21D is no easy task. Conventional defenses like the SM-3 missile may struggle, prompting a shift towards more advanced systems like the SM-6, which began deployment in 2013. Despite its fearsome reputation, skepticism surrounds the DF-21D's effectiveness. Some analysts argue that while it could disable a carrier, it might not completely destroy it. Furthermore, the missile's success hinges on accurately locating its target, a complex task that requires coordinated satellite, radar, and reconnaissance support. The missile's performance against a moving, well-defended target at sea remains unproven, leading some to question whether it truly spells the end of the U.S. Navy's aircraft carrier dominance. In 2015, the DF-21D made a public appearance during a military parade in Beijing, symbolizing China's growing military prowess. Its first reported live test occurred in 2020, drawing international attention and criticism, particularly from the U.S. and its allies. While the DF-26B is an intermediate-range missile with a range between 1,800 and 3,500 miles, these ranges are far enough to hit American ships at sea while keeping the Chinese launch sites out of reach of retaliatory attacks. It is a mobile two-stage missile that was first shown in a military parade in September 2015. The missile has a range of 4,000 kilometers and can be used for both regular and nuclear attacks on land and sea targets. The missile can carry a warhead weighing between 1,200 and 1,800 kilograms. It could potentially strike distant targets like Guam if necessary. The DF-26B is especially notable for its ability to target and potentially destroy large U.S. Navy aircraft carriers. If the U.S. helps Taiwan when China tries to invade and take control of the island, these ballistic missiles will be very important. The U.S. has the largest and most powerful Navy, with more aircraft carriers than any other country combined. To challenge such a strong fleet, 
China might not need its own aircraft carriers. Instead, it could use its ballistic missiles to damage U.S. ships. The DF-21D, known as the Carrier Killer, is less advanced than the DF-26, but can still be very effective. Both missiles are reported to have warheads that move at extremely high speeds and can change direction to avoid defenses. There may not yet be a way to stop these missiles. The U.S. needs to act fast to maintain its sea power. That's where the Meteor Project comes in. This U.S. Navy project is working on a new weapon to counter China's threats at sea. The weapon will be a high-power microwave weapon, or HPM weapon. It uses bursts of microwave energy to mess with or destroy the electronics in enemy systems. This technology, expected to be installed on ships by 2026, won't be used for cooking. Instead, it will use electromagnetic energy to damage or disrupt enemy electronics. It's being developed because it's affordable, quick to use, and covers a large area. Raytheon is working on these systems with a $31.3 million contract to help the Navy defend against various threats using directed energy. This system will be the Navy's first high-powered microwave weapon, a type of directed energy weapon that the Army, Navy, and Air Force are developing to fight low-cost, unmanned aerial systems. Unlike other directed energy weapons the Navy uses, the Meteor prototype will work differently. Instead of using a focused light beam, it will use microwave energy to damage the electronics in its targets. The Navy thinks this approach will be effective against anti-ship ballistic missiles, such as those used by China's military. The HPM weapon has big advantages over other types of weapons. Unlike lasers, an HPM weapon can produce a range of effects, from minor jamming to more severe damage, depending on what's needed. Sailors can use the HPM weapon to make more controlled attacks than with traditional weapons. Some HPM systems can cover a wider area than lasers, making them better for quickly targeting multiple threats, like drone swarms. Once it's powerful enough, this new weapon could become the Navy's top choice for dealing with China's advanced missiles. The beams from an HPM move at the speed of light, making it almost impossible for China's missiles to outrun or outmaneuver them. They would be in a cloud of their own smoke before they could even identify the source of the heat. Like other directed energy weapons, an HPM weapon also offers the benefit of a deep, somewhat unlimited magazine. Unlike traditional kinetic weapons, HPM weapons do not need to be physically reloaded with ammunition. They can theoretically keep firing for as long as they're connected to a power source. Then there is the benefit of a low cost per shot, which is a game changer on its own. The rise of low-cost yet highly effective offensive weapons in recent years has forced a worldwide hunt for even lower-cost defensive responses to them. As it stands, the U.S. is forced to counter $1,000 drones with million-dollar missiles, a disproportion that cannot stand. It's even worse on the seas, as ships have very limited defense missile stockpiles and cannot be easily replenished, at least not until they return to base, which could be thousands of miles away. A recent example of the need for better defense weapons is the conflict between the U.S. Navy and Houthi forces in the Red Sea. The Houthis have been attacking U.S. forces with anti-ship missiles, drones, and explosive boats. The U.S. had to use expensive defense missiles to respond. With the threat of China's advanced hypersonic missiles and other cheap weapons from around the world, the new HPM weapon could be very useful. It would help the Navy handle threats without using up costly missiles for smaller attacks. The U.S. Navy is focused on developing and using the HPM weapon. They requested over $9 million for the Meteor Project in fiscal year 2025 and $13.5 million for the 2024 fiscal year when the project was called RedCat. The reason for the name change is unknown, but the goal remains the same. Until the HPM weapon is ready, the Navy relies on ballistic missiles. These missiles are highly valued for both offense and defense, and the U.S. Navy has a significant stockpile. Among them, the SM-6 missile is especially important for the Navy. The SM-6, or Standard Missile 6, is a multi-mission missile capable of anti-air warfare, terminal ballistic missile defense, and anti-ship strike roles. It uses a blast fragmentation warhead to engage its targets within the atmosphere. It is a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-all kind of weapon. The Standard ARAM is a two-part missile with a booster and a second stage similar in appearance to the RIM-156A standard missile. It uses a radar seeker that is a larger version of the one found in the AIM-120C AMRAAM missile. This missile can operate in various modes. 
It can guide itself to the target using its radar, follow radar signals from another source, or work with cooperative engagement capability for over-the-horizon targeting. It can also be used for terminal ballistic missile defense, supplementing the standard Missile 3. The SM-6 missile has a longer range than previous SM-2 missiles and can intercept both high-altitude and low-flying anti-ship missiles, as well as perform terminal phase ballistic missile defense. It can also be used as a high-speed anti-ship missile. The SM-6 has a dual-mode seeker, meaning it can detect targets either with help from a ship's radar or by sending out its own radar signal. This allows it to identify land-based cruise missiles even in complex terrain, like behind a mountain. The SM-6 combines the aerodynamic design of the SM-2, the propulsion of the SM-3, and the front end of the AIM-120 Amaram. Its range is officially listed as 130 nautical miles, but some estimates suggest it could be as far as 250 nautical miles. The United States Navy is adding GPS guidance to the SM-6 Block IA missile, allowing it to hit surface targets if needed. However, because it's more expensive than other land attack weapons like the Tomahawk cruise missile, it's not likely to be the first choice. In February 2016, the Secretary of Defense confirmed that the SM-6 would also be modified to work as an anti-ship weapon. The SM-6 Block IB is in the final stages of development, with production expected to start in late fiscal year 2024. This version will have a larger motor for increased range and speed and is designed to reach hypersonic speeds, making it very effective against both aerial and surface targets. According to U.S. Navy Vice Admiral John Hill, the head of the U.S. Missile Defense Agency, the SM-6 is the only weapon in the country's arsenal at present that offers any ability to knock down highly maneuverable hypersonic threats. A number of things make the SM-6 the standout weapon it is. For one, it combines the solid rocket booster and dual-thrust rocket motors of the SM-3 series, the airframe of the SM-2 series, and the seeker and nose cone of an advanced medium-range air-to-air missile. Thanks to this hybrid nature, the missile is able to stand out from other missiles of the standard missile family. For instance, it is the only missile in the family to feature an active seeker for terminal guidance, which it adapted from the advanced medium-range air-to-air missile. The active seeker allows the missile to engage targets beyond the range of shipboard radars, which are limited by power output and the curvature of the Earth. This over-the-horizon intercept capability of the SM-6 is what makes it a key pillar of the Navy's integrated fire control counter-air concept. When integrated with other sensors through networks like the cooperative engagement capability, an SM-6 can conduct engagements beyond the range of any prior air defense interceptor. In 2016, it proved this during a test, setting a record for the longest range anti-air warfare engagement ever in U.S. Navy history. Delving into more details, the SM-6 is a 1.6-ton missile packing a 140-pound blast fragmentation warhead that detonates using a radar and contact fuse mechanism. Powered by a two-stage propulsion system, the missile can fly to an altitude greater than 110,000 feet, breaking into space, and hit speeds up to Mach 3.5 which is faster than the SR-71, which is dubbed the fastest air-breathing jet in the history of aviation. Guided by inertial guidance combined with terminal active and semi-active radar homing, an SM-6 can strike targets with precision that are up to 230 miles away. Given their different strengths, it's likely that the Meteor HPM weapon will complement rather than replace the SM-6 missile. Both the SM-6 and the HPM weapon are powerful, but neither is perfect on its own and each has its own limitations. However, together they can cover each other's weaknesses. By combining these two weapons, the U.S. Navy could create a defense and offense system capable of protecting its ships from a wide range of threats, regardless of their cost, speed, size, or maneuverability. Now let's talk about the Aegis Combat System. The system is an American naval weapon system that is designed for detecting, tracking, and targeting threats. It was originally developed by RCA's Missile and Surface Radar Division and is now made by Lockheed Martin. It centers around the AN Spy-1 radar, a powerful radar capable of searching, tracking, and guiding missiles at the same time, and can handle over 100 targets. The system was first tested on the USS Norton Sound in 1973. This combat system uses computer-based controls to manage various types of threats, including air, surface, and underwater attacks. The first Aegis-equipped ship, the USS Ticonderoga, was commissioned in 1983 and deployed six months later. 
The Navy initially built Aegis cruisers using the hull design of Spruance-class destroyers. The USS Bunker Hill was the first Aegis ship to feature the vertical launching system, improving missile options and firepower. Later, the USS Princeton introduced the upgraded AN SPY-1B radar, and the USS Chosen was the first to use the AN UIK-43 computers, which enhanced processing power. The USS Lake Champlain, a Ticonderoga-class cruiser launched in 1987, is equipped with the Aegis system. Starting with the USS Bunker Hill, these ships were upgraded with the Mark 41 vertical launching system, while earlier versions had a different missile launcher system. Originally used by the U.S. Navy, the Aegis system is now also used by the navies of Japan, Spain, Norway, South Korea, and Australia, with plans for use by the Royal Canadian Navy. As of 2022, 110 Aegis-equipped ships have been deployed, with 71 more planned. Aegis is also being developed for NATO's missile defense system. The Aegis combat system was originally developed by RCA's Missile and Surface Radar Division, which later became part of General Electric and was eventually sold to Martin Marietta, now part of Lockheed Martin. The U.S. Navy began developing Aegis in the 1960s to defend ships against the growing threat of Soviet anti-ship missiles. The system, named after the shield of the Greek god Zeus, was first successfully deployed on Navy ships in the 1970s. The Aegis system was initially installed on the USS Norton Sound for testing in 1973 and later on various cruisers, starting with the USS Ticonderoga. Over time, Aegis was integrated into more advanced ships like the Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, which featured improved radar, missile systems, and other upgrades. The system continues to evolve, with modern ships being equipped with advanced radars like the AN NSP-7 and NSP-6, enhancing their ballistic missile defense capabilities. The Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense Program, led by the U.S. Missile Defense Agency, enhances the Aegis combat system to defend against short and medium-range ballistic missiles. This program is part of the U.S. National Missile Defense and NATO's European Missile Defense Strategy. Aegis equipped ships with the MK-41 vertical launching system can intercept ballistic missiles in two phases, post boost and terminal. The RIM-161 Standard Missile 3 is used for mid-course interceptions outside the atmosphere, while the RIM-156 Standard Missile 2 Extended Range Block 4 is used for terminal phase interceptions within the atmosphere. The SM-6 missile, an advanced version of the SM-2ER, provides extended range and can be used for both air and missile defense. The Aegis BMD capabilities were enhanced by upgrading the SPY-1 radar with new signal processing technology, enabling better detection and tracking of threats. The multi-mission signal processor improves radar performance, enabling faster reaction times and more effective engagements across a wider range of threats, including in challenging environments like littorals and areas with electronic interference. As of April 2022, only the U.S. and Japan have deployed the Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense System on their military ships. The newest Flight 3 Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, starting with USS Jack H. Lucas, features the NSPY-6 AESA radar, which is 30 times more sensitive than the previous SPY-1D radar, greatly enhancing air and missile defense capabilities. Future upgrades will also bring this radar to Flight 208 ships. Aegis Ashore is a land-based version of the Aegis BMD system, already operational in Romania and soon in Poland. Although Japan canceled plans to deploy Aegis Ashore, it may still be deployed at a U.S. naval base in Guam. The U.S. Army's Integrated Air and Missile Defense Battle Command System aims to connect Aegis BMD radars with other defense systems, such as Patriot, Nassams, and THAAD, creating a network of sensors across land, sea, and air to better detect and intercept ballistic missile threats. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link appearing on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.